Hello, everyone. Thank you for signing on to today's Amtrak Vacations Top 3 Amtrak Train Routes webinar. Here I am popping on, on your screen, your host, Jarrett Kettinger. I am one of the business development executives here for Amtrak Vacations. Now, folks, I do recognize I look a little young, but I've actually been working with Amtrak Vacations for going on six years now. What does that mean? Well, I highly encourage and invite any of you to ask any questions at all by typing them into the questions box on the side of the GoToWebinar panel. Now, I will hold off on answering all the questions until the end of the presentation, but don't hesitate to start typing them into the box now. Additionally, all of you folks are going to want to hang on right up until the end because one lucky webinar attendee will win a special prize. And what is that special prize? A $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card. Now, for anyone that would like to download some material and bring that home, bring that with them. We have two handouts that you'll find on the side of the panel, one on our brand new National Parks itineraries and some uh, and another one highlighting some of our most popular itineraries year over year. So feel free to download those at the end of the presentation. Popping up onto your screen now is the Amtrak Vacation Systems Map. Everywhere you folks are seeing a colorful squiggly line on the map, that's a route that Amtrak travels on. Everywhere you folks are seeing a navy blue dot is a destination that Amtrak Vacations travels to, where we have the hotels, sightseeing, and attractions bundled and packaged together with the rail travel experience. Now, we don't just travel in the United States, we can also visit our friendly neighbors to the north up in Canada, as Amtrak does cross the border in Montreal, Niagara Falls, Toronto, and Vancouver, and we can even do cross-Canada via rail packages. Now, what makes Amtrak vacations different? Well, number one, I would say we're a bucket list experience. I can't tell you how many of our past travelers said that the first and foremost reason they went with Amtrak in the first place was that it was an opportunity to check an item off of their bucket lists. Room to roam with Amtrak, you can get up and walk around the train at your leisure. You are not at all confined to your seat the way you are on an airline. Get up and mosey all around, stretch your legs, head down to the cafe car and grab a snack, head to the dining car at mealtimes, or my favorite, head on down to the Observation Dome Lounge. Less hassle, less hassle to book and to travel, because all you have to do to book is call us at 1-800-268-7252. You'll be working with a friendly vacations consultant over the phone, and they'll be able to walk you through your itinerary, answer any questions you might have, and get you set up on your next trip. And then less hassle when you actually travel because we will have already sent you all your travel documents with the instructions on where to go and what to do, addresses for hotels, phone numbers, all the info about the tours that you're going to be on, and you'll have them 30 days prior to your actual travel. City to city service. We travel from downtown city to downtown city all throughout the USA and Canada. In fact, we have over 500 different stations to travel through. Satisfying your hunger. When you travel on Amtrak with a sleeper compartment booked, and I will make sure to take time towards the end of the presentation to highlight what the sleepers look like on the train. All your meals will automatically be price factored in and included within the cost of the cabin. And then flexibility. You're going to see a good handful of itineraries on the presentation today. You'll see a lot more on our website and some, of course, as well in our brochure. Now, those are just suggested itineraries. They are popular, but if you did want to customize or tailor make your own itinerary, either from the suggested trips or from something you've come up with on your own, we are capable of doing that. Now, what does customize mean? Because that is a big word, customize. Well, let me explain to you what I mean for it. And to do that, I will do take a hypothetical itinerary, the rails to the Grand Canyon. Just so you know, this itinerary departs overnight from Los Angeles, traveling out to historic Route 66, Williams, Arizona. Upon arrival into Williams, 
you will take a train that will run from Williams, Arizona, the Grand Canyon Railway, into the south rim of the canyon. You'll do a sightseeing tour of the south rim and have two nights to stay at the south rim at lodging there. Following the two nights, you'll take the Grand Canyon Railway back to Williams and then board the Amtrak to go overnight back to Los Angeles. Now, you may say, well, I like that itinerary, but two nights in the Grand Canyon isn't enough for me. I need a third night. No problem. You may also say, hey, I've always heard about that El Tavar, the, the five-star hotel on the canyon ledge. I'd like to upgrade to that property. Okay, as long as the three nights were available at the El Tavar, we would get you upgraded. You may even say, well, I'm traveling all the way out to Los Angeles to start the trip. I might as well spend a couple of nights in Los Angeles, either before or after coming back from the Grand Canyon. And so we may just add a Los Angeles getaway, which includes two nights hotel stay in the city, plus some sightseeing, creating your brand new customized vacation. We may even marry two itineraries together, such as the essential Yellowstone to Yosemite, which does one night in Salt Lake City, two nights in Yellowstone, and then takes the train overnight to San Francisco for two nights in San Francisco with a day trip to Yosemite. Well, you may say, well, I'm making it all the way out to the, the West Coast. I might as well add some stay up in the Pacific Northwest. So we may then take the Pacific Northwest itinerary and marry it to the essential Yellowstone to Yosemite and creating your new itinerary. Now, before we get into some of the other itineraries with Amtrak vacations, we always like to cover how you should prepare for your train travel. Now, packing for the train, you're allowed two carry-ons of up to 50 pounds each and two check bags of up to 50 pounds each, and that's per person, and that's completely free. Additionally, when should you get to the station ahead of time? Well, as we know with the airlines, you have to get there an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even three hours if you're traveling internationally. Well, with Amtrak, we say get to the stations maybe 45 minutes to an hour ahead of your travel. No longer than that. Now, if you are a little nervous, you've never been to an Amtrak station before, maybe give yourself an hour and 10 minutes, but really that's the max amount of, maximum amount of time you need to get to the station beforehand. Now, I hope everyone is, as we like to say here, all aboard as we jump in and start talking about the top three railroads. The number one voted most scenic railroad on the Amtrak system is the California Zephyr. That's the train that departs from Chicago, running right through the heart of the country, past the Denver Rocky Mountain Range, through the deserts of Nevada and the Sierra Nevada Mountain Range on the California border and into the uh, base area. Now you will stop right before San Francisco and take a transfer that Amtrak does provide. So once you get off the train at the station outside of San Francisco, we will provide a transfer into the city. And that, folks, is the California Zephyr route. Now, the first itinerary we're going to look at today that, in, that does have the California Zephyr on it is the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. Now, this train, as I said, departs from Chicago, and you can see by the red arrows the number of overnight spots on the train. So everywhere you're seeing a red arrow with a number in it, that's the number of overnight stays on the train. It departs overnight from Chicago, heading out to Salt Lake City, where you will spend one night in Salt Lake. As you can see by the bubble, the number one in the green bubble, that indicates the amount of overnights at a hotel at the city. After leaving Salt Lake City, you'll be transferred up to Yellowstone for two nights in Yellowstone National Park. After that, you'll head back to Salt Lake City and board the California Zephyr again to finish the route overnight out to San Francisco. You'll spend two nights in San Francisco, where we'll also provide a day tour of Yosemite National Park. From there, you'll board the Coast Starlight route, and I'll highlight that in a few more minutes, heading down to Los Angeles for one night in L.A. From there, you'll go overnight on the Southwest Chief for one night in Williams, Arizona, one night stay at the south rim of the canyon, and then finishing the Southwest Chief route 
back overnight to Chicago. Now, when staying up in Yellowstone, you'll have two nights stay there with a full day sightseeing lower loop of Yellowstone National Park. Now, the reason for the lower loop, because there are two different tours for Yellowstone, is that the majority of the geothermal features of the park are featured on the lower loop of the park. Such geothermal features include the Grand Prismatic Spring, which is one of the many beautiful hot springs up at the park, as you can see featured in the slide here, as well as the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. I don't know if you knew this, but there's a Grand Canyon in Yellowstone as well. It's a giant rushing waterfall that goes into a fast running river that's cut a giant canyon in the park. Great for picture taking opportunity. You'll also be guaranteed to see Old Faithful Geyser erupt at least once on your day tour. Now, when out in San Francisco, we provide a full day sightseeing tour to Yosemite National Park. So it's nice you'll get to stay in the big metropolitan fun city of San Francisco while getting a full day tour out into nature, out into Yosemite. The tour will pick you up in San Francisco, deliver you into the park for a morning tour that goes all throughout the park, and then drops you off for about three, three and a half hours in Yosemite to explore the park on your own. If you want to grab some lunch out in the park and enjoy some nice food out in nature, you're free to do that. If you're more of an adventurer and you want to go do a hike, feel free to take the time as long as you get back in time to pick up the tour again. Or if you just want to take a stroll throughout the park, the walk paths are tamped down. They're very flat. There's plenty of maps and signage all throughout the trails. So feel free to walk around the park and take some pictures as well. And then you'll be delivered back to San Francisco at the end of the day. And then you'll be heading down to the Grand Canyon from there. It is important to note that on the round trip services on the Grand Canyon Railway, which runs from historic Route 66 Williams, Arizona, into the south rim of the canyon and then back, you do that in coach accommodations on the Grand Canyon Railway. However, we highly advise always seeing about upgrading to first class or maybe even observation dome on the Grand Canyon Railway. The reason why? Well, number one, it isn't much more pricey than the standard coach class, but you get all the extra amenities, such as for first class, you can have refreshments as well as more plush, comfy seating. And if, say, you're a family of three or four, the seats actually can reverse. So you'd be sitting four seats looking at each other with a little coffee table type thing in between you so everybody's together. Or the observation dome, which that always faces forward. However, it has the nice observation dome windows that go all the way up to the roof of the train car. And, of course, refreshments are served there as well. Then when staying at the south rim of the canyon, we provide a motor coach freedom tour of the Grand Canyon south rim that stops at three scenic overlook points for picture taking opportunity. So as a recap, vote, that is the Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite and the Grand Canyon featuring the California Zephyr. Now, this next itinerary has the California Zephyr in its name, and this is basically our answer to throw spaghetti at the wall, see how many national parks we can get on one trip, and here we have one that has eight parks all by one train route, the Grand National Parks Discovery on the California Zephyr. This itinerary starts in Denver for two nights in Denver with a full day tour to Rocky Mountain National Park. From there, you'll pick up the California Zephyr, which runs just a few hours from Denver to Grand Junction, Colorado. Now, I'm going to take a moment to pause in regards to the parks, Arches and Canyonlands, Bryce, Capitol Reef, and Zion that you'll get to experience on this itinerary. We do it in kind of a unique format. Most companies would have a 20, 30, maybe even believe it or not, 40 person bus that would travel all throughout the parks. Alternatively, some companies would just set you up with an air uh, ticket to get out to the area and then a rental car, leaving you to drive yourself throughout the park, which is not too fun. Also, you'd have to be pretty much facing forward when you're driving on the highway for the duration of the travel. 
What we'll do is this. Once you arrive in Grand Junction, you'll spend one night stay at a hotel there. And the next morning you'll wake up and there will be a private driver service with a private luxury SUV, a Cadillac Escalade or a Chevy Suburban or the like that will arrive to pick you up and drive you through the parks over the next few days. And because it's just you and whoever your travel companion is, you're pretty much freewheeling it for the next several days as you're heading through the parks. Now, what's really cool is you can instruct your driver to kind of go at your own pace and even make suggestions about where and when and what to do. Let me give you an example. As you're heading west, driving through on the first day, Arches and Canyonlands National Park, you may instruct the driver, and this is just a suggestion from me, to have the driver do the Canyonlands part of the day tour first, and then Arches in the afternoon. The reason for that? Many people like to see the arches and take pictures of the red, uh, red and orange arches as the sun is setting over the park. So that's just one suggestion for me. From there, you'll continue out to Springdale, Utah, and check into a hotel in Springdale for one night. The next day, that same driver and that same SUV will be waiting for you outside of your hotel to take you on a full day, all encompassing tour of Zion National Park. After the tour is over, you'll be dropped back off in Springdale for one more night stay there. Then, as you prepare to head back east, back to Grand Junction, your driver and guide with the same SUV is going to drive you through Bryce Canyon and Capitol Reef National Park on the way back to Grand Junction, where you'll spend one more night in Grand Junction. Then you'll pick up the California Zephyr train again, heading out to Salt Lake City for one night in Salt Lake before heading up to Yellowstone National Park for two nights in Yellowstone and then heading back down to Salt Lake City where you'll pick up the California Zephyr one more time, this time overnight on the train, out to San Francisco for two nights in San Francisco with a day tour of Yosemite National Park. In Denver, we do a sightseeing Rocky Mountain National Park tour. So again, you'll get the nice uh, comfort of the big metropolitan city of Denver. So many hotels to choose from with a full day tour out to Rocky Mountain National Park. What I like about this is that you'll get to see all the beauty of the Rocky Mountains, as well as visit a couple of small ski towns that are nestled amongst the mountains. And also, you take a different route heading back into town than you did on your way out to the park. So you'll get to see the Rocky Mountain National Park from many different angles. Then by way of Grand Junction, you'll visit Arches and Canyonlands, Zion, Capitol Reef, and Bryce Canyon National Park all on a few day tour, like I said, with your own private driver and guide service and SUV. And here you can see one example of a picture taken of the beautiful arches as it's lit up in the evening time. In Yellowstone National Park, you'll have the sightseeing lower loop tour of National Park. And here you can again see the vibrant Grand Prismatic Spring up in the park, one of the many beautiful geothermal features and one of the many reasons to go and visit. And then the tour will end by way of San Francisco, which we do include with a trip out to Yosemite National Park. So that, folks, is the Grand National Park's discovery on the California Zephyr. The next train route up is the Coast Starlight. The Coast Starlight, which runs from Los Angeles up the coast of California through the Pacific Northwest, ending in Seattle, which was voted number two most scenic rail route in the United States. The first itinerary we'll discuss today is the Californian. I really like this itinerary. It's, it's was put together just a couple of years ago by our product director. And basically it's what you do if you really want to have the quintessential California experience. The itinerary starts with four nights in San Francisco before taking the coast starlight down the coast for two nights in Los Angeles and two nights in San Diego. Now, 
During the stay in San Francisco, we include a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour of the city. That's one of those double-decker uh, buses that travel all throughout the city. You can get on and off at your leisure. For example, you could get on at uh, Pier 39 Fisherman's Wharf, which has many great uh, uh, aspects to it, such as vi visuals of the bull seals in Alcatraz Island and Golden Gate Bridge. You could take it out to Chinatown if you want to do some shopping, or even the the uh, Square Union Square area where you can see see some shows or do some dinner, or even a little more shopping if you're traveling uh, and have a little bit of extra money to spend. Then you'll have a full day tour out to Yosemite National Park. It's the same tour as earlier that picks up in San Francisco, heads out for a full morning tour of the park, and then you get a few free hours to explore the park on your own before being delivered back to the city at the end of the day. And then one of my favorite aspects of the itinerary, the wine tour of Sonoma and Napa Valley that again departs from San Francisco. You'll head out and travel amongst the many wineries outside of the city. And you will also have a couple of opportunities for wine tasting. You can see why it's one of my favorite aspects of the tour. From there, you'll head down the coast of California on the coast starlight down to Los Angeles for two nights in Los Angeles with a hop on hop off tour there. You can use that to get it on and off at your leisure, whether you're heading down to Santa Monica Boulevard, the Hollywood Walk of Fame, or even that giant donut that's always in the background in the movies when you see Los Angeles. You can get on and off at your leisure. It's up to you. You'll also have a hop on hop off tour of San Diego. Uh, you can see one of the beautiful parks on there. I believe that's Balboa Park. You can use it to get there. You can get to the waterfront. Uh, you could also head out to the Gas Lamp Quarter, which has amazing Mexican food. Trust me, you aren't going to want to miss it. And also what I really like is that tour does travel right by the Marine Barracks down, by, down in San Diego. And they do do a nice salute to the veterans in, uh, in the Marines as they travel by. That, folks, is the Californian featuring San Francisco, Napa Valley, Los Angeles, and, Yos and uh, Yosemite, and San Diego all on one trip alone. Next, we have the Pacific Northwest. This does two nights in San Francisco before going overnight on the Coast Starlight up to Portland for two nights in Portland, Oregon, and then finishing the route out to Seattle for two nights in Seattle. During the stay in San Francisco, we include a Pier 39 attraction pass. That's a little booklet of tickets. It has admissions to some of the attractions there, such as the arcades, a couple of the smaller uh, museums. I believe there's a children's museum on Pier 39. And then my favorite place, the Aquarium of the Bay. It's a small aquarium. It really only takes about an hour to walk through it. But I personally really liked it for a couple of reasons. One. You enter the, the aquarium and take an elevator to its lower level. When you exit the elevator, you are actually underneath the tanks. So you're in tunnels underneath the aquarium's tanks. So the manta rays, the fish, the sharks are all swimming all above your head. After you walk through the, essentially walk through the tanks or under the tanks, you'll take an elevator back up to the main level. And when you exit the elevator, there's a giant uh, aquarium encampment where three baby otter brothers live and they swim and play around. They're quite feisty creatures uh, and it's a really nice thing, especially for the kids. It's, they're really cute and they're really funny. And then we also include a sightseeing tour of Muir Woods. We can go out and see the giant redwoods as well as a stop at the small town of Sausalito where you can always get some seafood or do a little shopping. After that, you'll head overnight on the train, the Coast Starlight, up to Portland for two nights in Portland, Oregon, with a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour there, and a spirit dinner cruise out onto the water. So I believe that's a three- or four-course meal right out on the water in the evening time where you can see the beautiful cityscape with all the buildings lit up. It's quite romantic. 
And then after Portland, you'll head up to Seattle. We'll have a sightseeing tour of Seattle that'll travel by Pike's Place Market, as you can see featured in the slide here, the Seattle Waterfront, and the Seattle City Center, where you will have admission to the Space Needle, because if you're going to Seattle, you have to visit the Space Needle. It's essentially quintessential in the city as well as admission to the Chihuly Garden and Glass Exhibit, which is a giant big glass dome with a nice, uh, very beautiful garden inside with all the glass-blown structures made by the eccentric glass-blowing artist Dale Chihuly. Uh, it's quite the sight and, and definitely worth the visit. So that, folks, is the Pacific Northwest, one of the uh, other itineraries featured on the Coast Starlight, again, the Coast Starlight was voted number two most scenic rail route after the California Zephyr. And then the number three most scenic rail route, the Empire Builder, which runs from Chicago all the way up through the top of the country and out into Seattle. Now, the Empire Builder is particularly important for Amtrak vacations because it travels along the route that features our top selling destination, Glacier National Park. And that d destination will be featured in the Glacier National Park Express. Now, it, it should be worth noting that in addition to traveling on the third most scenic rail route in the United States, the Empire Builder, and visiting Glacier National Park, this particular itinerary, the Glacier National Park Express, is a top selling itinerary for the past several years. It was top seller in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and we're only a few months into 2019, and it's again a top seller for us. This does two nights in Chicago before going overnight on the Empire Builder out to Glacier National Park for three nights in Glacier before finishing the route out to Seattle to cap off the trip with two nights in Seattle. In Chicago, we include a sightseeing architecture cruise of the lake and the Chicago River. Folks, I was just in Chicago this past weekend. That lake might as well be an ocean. If you're either looking at it from a, a skyscraper or actually on the water itself, you cannot see one end from the other. It's just huge. And then you'll travel along the Chicago River amongst all the beautiful architecture, all the great skyscrapers that make Chicago so spectacular. From there, you'll go overnight on the Empire Builder out to Glacier National Park for three nights in Glacier, where we include two sightseeing opportunities. The first of which is the Big Sky Circle Tour, which is done on those historic red buses. You might have seen that on maybe the Tra Travel Channel or the History Channel. They're from the 1930s, but they're well oiled up and able to travel throughout the park. They do full day tours over the going to the Sun Road and down St. Mary Valley. Uh, the tour guides are known as jammers. They're the drivers of the bus. The reason they're known as jammers, well, like I said, those buses are old. So occasionally they are forced to jam the brakes. Also, the jammers have a funny anecdote. If they have the same amount of passengers at the end of the day, that they had when they traveled out at the beginning of the day, they are permitted to run the tour the following day. Also included is the Two Medicine Valley Boat Cruise, which is a very scenic and serene cruise out onto Two Medicine Valley Lake. And then we cap off the trip out in Seattle with a sightseeing tour of the city and admission to the Space Needle, as you can see featured in the slide here. So folks, that is the Glacier National Park Express featuring the Empire Builder. Now this last itinerary, the Grand Rail Experience, also features the Empire Builder, but it also, as you can see, features the Coast Starlight in its entire length as well. This departs from Chicago, going overnight for two nights on the Empire Builder, out to Seattle for two nights in Seattle, before taking the Coast Starlight in its full run all the way down to Los Angeles. And then from there, you'll board the Sunset Limited, which is really an unsung rail route with Amtrak. It's very popular, but it's not talked about a lot. You'll get to experience the Sunset Limited in its full run from Los Angeles out to the bayous of New Orleans. 
after the two nights in New Orleans, you'll take the Crescent route, which runs up into Washington, D.C. What I like is that the Crescent runs along areas of Civil War battlefields, and there is a little pamphlet in each of the roomettes and bedrooms indicating when you're going to look out the window to see the battlefields. And then after the night in Washington, D.C., you'll head overnight to Chicago to finish up the routes. Now, while visiting Seattle, we include a sightseeing tour there. In Los Angeles, you'll get a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour of the city. In New Orleans, the city tour will take you down to the bayous. It'll take you out to the French Quarter. It'll take you out to the Garden District. So you get a real full, all-encompassing experience of the Crescent City. And then one of my favorite tours that we can operate as a company is the Monuments by Moonlight Tour, which you'll experience up in Washington, D.C. What that tour does is it travels out in the early evening time, basically around sunset, to visit the major monuments all peppered all throughout the city as they're lit up in their full glory. And what's really nice is that during the day in Washington, I mean, it is a very touristy city. There's a lot of tourists. In the evening time, there's far less people crowding the monuments, and you could get to see the monuments kind of in a unique fashion, and you can get real close and get some great pictures. So that, folks, is the Grand Rail experience, and that is basically like a giant loop with um, many Amtrak rail routes on a big loop all throughout the USA. Now, I see that a lot of questions have come in, so kudos to you folks. Thank you for typing them in already. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk for a few minutes about the onboard accommodations on Amtrak, and then a couple of discounts because, hey, who doesn't like to save when you're traveling? And then at the end of the presentation, I will take a moment for the Q&A, and then I will announce the lucky $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card winner. Now, the first level of accommodations is the coach accommodations, which feature two big plush seats. What I like is there's no pesky middle seat on Amtrak the way there is on many airline. In fact, I just flew on Sunday in my I was hoping, praying, and had my fingers crossed that I did not get a middle seat. And believe it or not, I actually got an aisle seat. I was quite lucky that day. But with Amtrak, that's never a worry. Just a very comfortable aisle seat and a very comfortable window seat. They're big, plush. They recline at a 45-degree angle with a leg rest that will kick up, a tray table that will fold down, plenty of room above head for your luggage, a nice big picture window. That is the standard with Amtrak. Outlets to charge your devices in, and legroom, plenty of legroom. And of course, you are not confined to your seat. You can get up and, room, and roam around the train at your leisure. Now, the next level up is the sleeper roomette, which is its own private cabin on the train with a door that will shut and lock, blinds that will go over the windows, two big plush seats that face each other during the day, a tray table that will fold out for your snacks and laptop and whatnot, a big picture window to enjoy the sights out of as standard for Amtrak, and at night everything folds down to bunk-style sleeping accommodations. Now, you're probably looking at the diagram and saying, I don't see a bathroom in that room. You'd be right. The bathrooms down the hall are four in number and are only for those in the roomette car, so no one else can utilize them. Additionally, there is a car attendant that constantly goes in and cleans out those four private bathrooms. Now, if you are insisting on having your own private bathroom and shower accommodations in your own room, that's fine. Just upgrade to the sleeper bedroom, which is a bigger room itself with a big captain's chair, a long couch, a nice big picture window to enjoy the sights out of. Everything still folds down to bunk style sleeping, but you have your own private bathroom and shower in the room itself. Now, as I mentioned before, as long as you have a sleeper compartment, all the meals are included, and the dining on the train is quite phenomenal. It's all ordered off of a chef-inspired menu with the food cooked to order. For breakfast, you could get eggs, bacon, and toast, a fresh omelet cooked to order, or if you're a kid or a kid at heart, the quote-unquote choo-choo, French toast. 
For lunch, you could always get a sandwich, a juicy cheeseburger, or a nice big salad. And then for dinner, there's usually a vegetarian option, a pasta option, a special of the evening, or my favorite, the Amtrak Signature Steak. Now, folks, that does pair nicely with a glass of red wine. I won't let you know how I discovered that. I'll let you figure that out on your own. And, folks, save room for dessert because dessert is included with both lunch and dinner. Now, to do a little research on us, feel free to sign on to AmtrakVacations.com. Click on the Destinations tab. A tab will drop down with East Coast packages, West Coast packages, national parks, rail-in sales, what have you. Now, if you did sign on this program a little late, no problem, folks. If you wanted to listen to the program in its entirety, tomorrow we will be putting it on our blog. To sign on, simply go on to AmtrakVacations.com, click on blog, and it will be the next presentation put up there. Now, how to book? Well, as I highlighted before, you can always visit us at AmtrakVacations.com to do a little research. Then feel free to give us a call at 1-800-268-7252 to talk with any of our friendly vacation consultants about your next vacation. Or if you have a local travel agent that you uh, are comfortable working with, feel free to call them. We work with travel agents all the time. Now, some discounts, because it is nice to travel, but it is also nice to save a little bit along the way. Seniors 65 and over receive a 10% discount on the rail portion of an Amtrak package. Children aged between 2 to 12 years old will receive 50% off the rail portion of the Amtrak package. And then any active military personnel, spouses, and dependents will receive a 10% discount on the rail portion of an Amtrak package. Additionally, we have some trending destinations that because they are trending, we've decided to help those who are excited about it go ahead and book by adding extra discounts for packages to Niagara Falls, Arches National Park, Grand Teton National Park, and Seattle. There's actually three additional destinations that, that could be incorporated with the discount offer. To find them, feel free to go on to AmtrakVacations.com. Now, one more highlight, if you did want to download those downloadables in regards to our new national park packages and trending national park packages, feel free at this point to click on the side of the GoToWebinar panel and take those along with you. And then I have a question for you folks, and it, I'm about to answer all your Q&A, so it's time you answer one of my questions. Do you have a rail vacation or a destination you are interested in? Also, if you do, when would you like to go? If you have someplace exotic or someplace interesting that Amtrak Vacations can take you, type the answer into the questions box on the side of the GoToWebinar panel. I can't promise anything, but any, good, any very interesting answers on destinations you'd like to go may or may not get you the win of the $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card. Now, Give me a moment because I see many questions have come through. I'll just take a second or two to just start reading through some of them. So be patient with me and I will answer your question. All right. So first question, are there roomettes or sleeper facilities for travelers who are traveling on their own? Well, the roomettes or bedrooms or any other cabin on the train, it can fit up to two people, up to two adults or an adult and a kid, but up to two people per room. So if you were just traveling alone, you would just be booked into your own cabin. No one else would be in there with you. Someone else had a question, couple of questions in regards of advice on where to stay in either San Francisco, Chicago, or New York prior to a train trip or maybe after a train trip or on a train trip. Well, I would say this, for San Francisco, 
you're, you'd be really well put to stay near Fisherman's Wharf. I mean, it's walkable to most of the hotels in the area. Uh, additionally, a lot of the attractions down there are, are also very close by. And it is a great area to be by with the restaurants and whatnot. Uh, but so I would suggest staying around there. As for Chicago, I mean, anything from uh, anywhere up on the North Loop or in the heart of the city, particularly down in the theater areas. That's where I stayed this past weekend was in the theater area of Chicago. There's a plenty of hotels to pick from there. And then in New York, most people will either stay near Times Square or Fifth Avenue. Some people like to stay near Central Park, but that's a little bit north in the city, kind of away from some other stuff. So yeah, so yeah. Those are some suggestions for you. As for exact hotel properties, our vacation consultants would be happy to advise you on which properties are available, depending on when you're planning to travel. Now, I like this next question because it's a very good question. Is there first class for the day trip from LA to San Francisco on the Coast Starlight or vice versa? Yes, there is. There is a first class ticket and option on the Coast Starlight. Uh, there's some extra added benefits, I believe, a meal and whatnot. And uh, for any pricing, feel free to call us at 1-800-268-7252. Someone, someone asked a question, do we have any itineraries that include Seattle, Portland, Oregon, and then Disneyland? Well, we don't have an exact set itineraries right now. However, we can customize any of our itineraries to fit your travel needs. So if that means we take a Seattle getaway, a Portland getaway, which a getaway includes two to three nights in a destination, and then an Anaheim getaway and add them all together with the Coast Starlight in between them, yes, then we could, for you, create a brand new itinerary featuring Seattle, Portland, Oregon, and Disneyland, absolutely. Do we have accommodations on the train for anyone with mobility issues or limited mobility? Absolutely. We have the ADA rooms and ADA areas on the lower level of the train. The ADA accessible sleepers will accommodate a walker or a wheelchair. If you're just traveling by day and you can, you're able to get out of a walker or wheelchair and sit in a seat, there are areas where we can secure the walker, secure the wheelchair in the coach class of the seating. Someone asked, can a vacation start in one area and end in another, as opposed to, say, traveling round trip, which some of the packages on the presentation did go round trip? Yes, absolutely. We do that all the time. In fact, a lot of the time, it's more frequent that one does start a trip in one area and end in another. That is very common. Someone asked, I was told you could fit three adults in a family bedroom if one of the adults is very small. So you, I apologize, but absolutely not. Uh, and I don't mean to joke there. It's the truth. Amtrak will not allow three adults, no matter what the size in the family bedroom. The reason why, one, is that room was only designed for maximum two adults and two small children. And when I say small children, I may mean children between the ages of four to maybe eight years old. If you are planning on sleeping there, the beds are meant for young kids. So someone asked, what is the advantage of upper level versus lower level on the train? Well, the upper level does tend to be, be a little bit more of a vantage point for seeing the scenery. Now, that doesn't mean you're completely blocked off from the scenery if you're on the lower level, but mo most things such as the dining car, the observation car, and many of the rooms are on the upper level, which is really where most people like to stay in, and have a room cabin because it allows them to see more scenery and has a better vantage point for the scenery. As for requesting a room that is close to the dining car, there's no no real way we can set that up ahead of time. It sounds funny, but they build the trains together before each trip. And so there's really no way we could make sure a room was assigned next to or near the dining room ahead of travel. It just, there's no way for us to accomplish that. I do apologize. 
As for requesting space in the observation car, uh, we are not able to put to uh, request space in the observation car. It is first come, first serve. The observation cars are upstairs, so if one does have difficulties with mobility and they are staying in the uh, lower level of the train, it is up to you whether in your decision whether you climb to the top level to go to the observation car or not. That's not for us to decide. All right, so I see we do have some people that answered with uh, some interesting requests on where to, where they want to travel. Excellent. Someone asked, uh, can roomettes be grouped together? So let's talk a hypothetical. See, say it was a, a husband and wife and their two kids, and they were getting two roomettes. Well, what we would do is we would book two roomettes for the four people and say one adult, one kid went in one roomette, one adult, one roommate went to another. Now, once the rooms are booked, Amtrak Vacations agents are able to see what the number of that room is. Say it was rooms 15 and 19. Well, if you were, in, if you really did want to make sure the roommates were across the hall or next to each other, as long as there's availability, we can call over to the uh, Amtrak call center and asked for the roommates to say instead of being 15 and 19 be 15 and 16 so they're across the hall or 15 and 17 so that they are right next to each other so we can't guarantee it all the time because it is first come first serve but we will try and do our best to get the rooms right next to or as close to each other as possible Someone asked about combining the five parks, the uh, trips that we talked about there for Arches, Canyonlands, Bryce, and Zion with a trip to the Grand Canyon, Las Vegas, and then LA. To that which I say, I highly encourage that you go ahead and do an itinerary, itinerary like that. That'd be a wonderful trip and we can absolutely put that together. We already do have itineraries that do the five parks plus the Grand Canyon and it would be very easy for us to add a stay in Vegas and LA along with. So absolutely. Let's see. Someone says, someone asked, is it less expensive for two people to travel in a sleeper than for one person in a sleeper? And I get that question all the time. So let me phrase it like this. It is no it is no less or more expensive. It's just depending on how many people are in the room is how many people you're paying for. So like a hotel room, most companies base off the pricing of a room based on double occupancy or two people being in the room. Now, what that means is it's based off of dividing a cost by two because two people would theoretically be in that room. Well. If it's just one person in the room, sometimes it appears as though it's a little bit more pricey because they have to pay the full boat for that room. So no, it's no less or more expensive. If there's two people in the room, you're going to be paying for the full boat of the room plus two tickets. If you're a single traveler in the room, you're paying for one ticket in the full boat of the room. Uh, someone asked, do you stay in Glacier National Park? In fact, you do. You stay at the Glacier National Park Lodge on the eastern end of the park. And the reason why Glacier is so popular with us is that the Empire Builder pulls up right to the eastern end of the park. In fact, from the door of the station to the door of the Glacier National Park Lodge is only 200 steps. Uh, someone did uh, say, ask if the hotels are included in each of the cities. Absolutely. Everywhere you saw a map with a bubble that had a number in included was a, des was a destination with the hotels included. Someone asked how far the Emeryville station is from Fisherman's Wharf. Uh, that is about a, about a 50 minute ride. Uh, Emeryville is about 45, 50 minutes from, I, I would say, I would say around at about an hour just to, to, with traffic and everything else, split the difference and call it an hour. It's uh, about an hour from Emeryville to Fisherman's Wharf. 
Someone asked, what happens if you were to miss the train? Well, we do have a friendly call center of customer service agents that are happy to help you get onto the next train. However, I would highly advise getting to the station 45 minutes to an hour ahead of time to make sure you don't. Now, I know Murphy's Law, things happen, but I would encourage getting to the station early. But if you did, you would not be stranded. You could always give us a call and our customer service representatives would be happy to assist you. Now, it looks like this is the that was the last question of the day, and I see so many people that were interested in this, uh, the many destinations, many itineraries. So, well, let's see. We have a winner of the day, and the winner of the day for the $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card is Mr. Andrew Schwartz. So congratulations, Andrew. We will be emailing you the $100 Amtrak Vacations uh, gift card, uh, and that will come shortly after the presentation. Uh, someone asked, can you stay in Emeryville and still do a wine country tour? Well, all, all of our tours are based out of San Francisco. Now, you could explore wine country on your own. However, we highly encourage staying in the city because that's where all of our tours depart out of. Mr. Schwartz, congratulations. Your gift card's coming right up. And that looks like the last question of the day. So everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you, everybody.